I just don't even know how to react to that. I mean, he just looks like a demon. Like, I just... I have no idea on how I'm going to react to that. My own son just looks like a demon. I just... I just don't know how I can handle this, Mom. How, how can you handle it? Well, I'll have a talk with your father. How can I have supposed to have a talk with him? Remember, you have... have Mothra's powers. Use them. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. All right, um... Just... Give me a moment. I need to... Have a word with my father. All right, I'll leave you alone. Junior took a really deep breath and let it out. Father, can you hear me? Please, I need to talk to you. It's... It's about my son. Please, I need your help. Junior waited for a good, good moment. It wasn't until a little strange, strange smoke started coming out from the ground right behind him. He turned around to face it, and what he saw made his heart broke. So what he saw was the spirit of his father. Junior almost wanted to cry immediately. Because it's been so long since the last time he saw his dad. Hey son. Hey dad. So, how's my boy doing? I, I'm doing fine, father. But, I need your help. And this is about my, my upcoming grandchild, isn't it? Yes, I'm pretty sure you've already seen the future. Well, take my hand and I'll show you more about your, your son's future. Junior at first didn't want to, but then he sighed. He took his father his hand. They went in the future and saw oh, his son, Godzilla Ultima. So it was 100% confirmed. My son is going to be called Ultima. What do you expect, my boy? Well, Ruby and I expect that he's going to be different. Well, you can't expect everything to be exactly to 
be in your way, son. I know it's bad, Dad. But Junior watches his son rise up from the flames. He had clearly the devil look in his eyes. But still, they reminded his eyes were very similar to Ruby's eyes. Silver. The roar was his bone showing. It was more like a combine between Junior's roar and his dad's roar combined. He saw his body armor and he was actually really impressed. The military queen would scratch him. It's not like they could have scratched him in the first place, even if he had that body even if he didn't have that body armor on him. But how the way Junior charged up his tongue breath? It was very different. Instead of starting from the tail, it just started immediately from the back. It went all the way, the way up to his tail. Junior noticed on how long his son's tail was. Jesus Christ, does he have a long enough tail? I know, that's what I reacted at first. Then Junior ended up seeing that his son was charging up his atomic breath very differently. There was like six rings in front of him. What's up with that? I honestly have no idea. But then, when, when Ultima unleashes atomic breath, he nearly cut through everything like, like a hot knife through butter. Jesus Christ. That has to be the most powerful atomic breath I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Is that powerful and can cut through buildings like nothing? Then your son has to be the most dangerous Godzilla I've ever seen. Mine. Mine and your atomic breath. Well, we just go slowly. But just how... Look how fast... How easily your son manages to cut through one single building. Just what? Just I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. Junior saw on how easily his son cut through a building and like nothing. Just one slice and boom. That building is completely cut down like nothing. Junior and his father, it took them time to cut through the building almost immediately. It goes slowly, but I, it was still you know, a work in progress. Junior, here's his son, Ultimate, did it so fast and so quick that Junior barely had enough time to see on how fast the atomic breath was going. But, your son may look intimidating and may act like a bad guy, but he does have your, but he does have Rubius' good heart. What do you mean by that? I'll show you. Watch this. Junior ended up watching Ultima protecting innocent people. And fighting off evil monsters. Your son, he's different between he, he, he Godzilla and human. He chose to place among us. Be it. He has a heart of a Godzilla, but he has a soul of a human being. That's what makes him so special. So he's not a complete monster then. Nope. And what are you, and who are you to talk about? You did some some cruel stuff that were more dangerous than him. I know, I know, I know. It's just ridiculous. I'm I'm still processing this. My son is literally OP right now. You could say that again. But, 
he I mean, he doesn't do some bad things sometimes, but he has a good heart. And he has a good soul. Like I said before, he has the heart of a Godzilla and the soul of a human being. Why did we just did a How to Train a Dragon 2 reference? I have no idea. But anyways, son, what I'm trying to say is even the most dangerous and most cruel kaiju do have some good in their hearts. Your son is one of is one of them. When I went back to present day, Junior was still trying to process about his son's atomic breath. So, son, what do you think? What do I think? I think my son is a little OP for starters. I can agree with you there. Your son is indeed OP. But he also shares a lot. Of, also shares a few things in common with Ruby, besides for silver, besides for his silver eyes. Really? What else does he have in common with Ruby? His, her kindness. His, her. Supportive, supportant, supportive like his mother, and well, last but not least, well, <laughs> his her her addiction on eating cookies all the time. Of course, that would happen. And finally, becoming a good leader. Son, Ultima is a strange Godzilla, but he's your son. And you're his grandfather, Dad. I know that. But. Son, what I'm trying to say is, don't immediately assume that they're going to end up turning bad. I wasn't going to assume that my son was going to turn bad. Oh, really? I saw within your mind that you having fears that Ultima might turn out evil. How did you? Never mind. And son, you don't need me to, to be there to support your relationship with Ruby. And I am proud of you. And yes, I do have my fair share of humiliation too. I also have my fair share of close deaths as well. But that doesn't mean anything. I'm not disappointed at you. Almost all of our ancestors had a close brush with death, but we walked right through it. I, on the other hand, was not so lucky in 1995, and I wish I was alive so I could spend time with my son and my wife and my future daughter-in-law and watch my grandson grows up. Me too, Dad. Me too.